Seven o'clock, we'll get started. Let's all stand and uh, face the flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So welcome to the Bloomfield Township Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of June 18th, 2024. As a brief introduction, the Zoning Board of Appeals is a seven member quasi judicial body appointed by the Bloomfield Township Board of Trustees for the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. Matters pending before the Zoning Board of Appeals are decided on a case by case basis. Any appeal of a decision made by the Zoning Board of Appeals is subject to circuit court review. Each case will be called separately in the order shown on tonight's agenda. There will be an opportunity for public comment at one point during each case. All persons wishing to comment will be asked to provide their name and address at the podium. Address your comments to the board and not the applicant or other members of the public. Given numbers, the number of appeals tonight, please make your comments brief. <coughs> comments by the Neighborhood Association will be considered as part of the factual information presented to the board, but those comments are not the determining factor for approval or denial. Please confine comments to the specific request for the board. For a request to be successful, an affirmative vote of at least four members present is required. We hope this provides a better understanding of what you can expect at tonight's meeting. So let's take attendance. So noted. And then uh, I'll need a uh, either a motion to approve or amend the minutes of May 14th, 2024. Move to approve the minutes of the May 14th, 2024 meeting. Support. That motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. So let's call uh, the first uh, item. For today, uh, 1P2698 Turtle Ridge, is the applicant ready? Hi, my name is Sabrina Brown with Mosier Design. I am here on behalf of the homeowners of 2698 Turtle Ridge, Ridge Drive. Um, I'm here today asking for a permission variance. Um, first, I would like to discuss the request for encroachment into the ESA setback. When building the home, the builder and the landscaper made encroachments into the ESA buffer area. Since then, they have worked with Angela and the rest of the environmental department on a restoration plan. This plan calls for native plantings back in this area and from our review looks adequate to satisfy a natural environment and has been deemed adequate by the township staff and consultants as well. Um, we were brought in to develop features for the living spaces, but because this needs to be approved as well, we agreed to com kind of combine the request with ours. Um, regarding the items that we designed uh, for the homeowner, we are requesting a permission variance for the featured or the features listed. Um, everything being added to the existing patio space um, is within the required setbacks. The property has also existing evergreen screening that would screen the new features proposed. The Neighborhood Association has approved the proposed layout, and so the request for these features is pretty straightforward, um, and therefore, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Do you have any questions from the board? Could, yes, could I have uh, some more explanation on the three-foot retaining wall? Um, let me see. Yeah. yeah, so it's basically holding up that kind of pool patio that's highlighted there. Um, to be able to hold that space up, it needs to be three feet tall within that space. Is the that... pool existing? Because I know yes. we had approved it before. Yes. So after the fact, you do determine you needed a retaining wall. Is that the situation? Yeah. Um, as the applicant had stated at the beginning, there were some issues with encroachment into the wetlands. Um, so there had to be some changes to the existing um, deck patio. And one of them was to add the retaining wall to allow for the corner of the patio to cantilever as opposed to sitting into the um, natural feature setback. 
So that's why it's after the fact. It's they're helping. That's part of the addressing of those previous sure, yeah. encroachments that they've been working to amend with environmental engineering. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I'll open this to the public for comment. Does anyone would like to comment on this item? <laughs> Motion or further discussion? Well, comment on the motion. <clears throat> Um, in regards to the, and I'll start with the permission uh, request first, um, in regards to the appeal at uh, 2698 Turtle Ridge Drive um, <clears throat> for the accessory structure of a pergola, pizza oven, and wood burning fireplace. Um, I move that the request be uh, approved as submitted based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate compliance with section 42-7.6 standards. Um, because the use of uh, such accessory structures is appropriate for the neighborhood, uh, these are definitely um, very common accessory structures. Um, in terms of the dimensional variance, um, I also move that the variance be approved as requested, and that variance is for the retaining wall and pergola encroaching into the natural features setback. I move that the variance be approved as requested because based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards were practical difficulty um, because compliance <laughs> with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because um, without the retaining wall and all of that, it would actually impact the natural setback. Um, there's no injustice to the adjoining uh, neighbors um, because of actually putting up the retaining wall. This is a uh, rectifying um, situation and unique circumstances of the property as well um, because of the existing uh, floor plan of the pool and the accessory structures. Um, this is something that is unique and because of that, it is uh, not self-created. Um, if approved, the motion also includes application for all necessary permits must be made within one year for the proposed pergola, pizza oven, and wood-burning fireplace, as well as the retaining wall, and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. Um, additional evergreen plantings may be required to screen the pergola and pizza oven and wood-burning fireplace from public view. Before, um, before we vote, sorry, if we just have discussion briefly, does it say how large of an encroachment it is? Because it just says encroaching into the 25-foot required setback, but it doesn't say. Yeah, I mean, I, you can see the purple line, but I, I can't tell how many feet that is. It would, oh, I, the distance into? Um, pretty. I don't happen to have that off my. Okay, well, I mean, I, I don't think it'll be a surprise to anybody if I vote no, so. Any, any further discussion? So we have a motion and support for the motion. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I am opposed. Should we take a uh, roll call? Do you want to take a roll call vote or? I think that I have it. Okay. Uh, congratulations. Your request is granted. Thank you. Thank you. So calling the next item, uh, item one, 185 uh, Woodage. Is the applicant ready? Good evening. State your name and address. My name is Tony Barish. I'm uh, here on the behalf of the homeowners. And your address? Uh, address is uh, for the job or my business address? Uh, the proposal. Okay, the proposed. <laughs> it is 185 Wood Edge. Okay, thank you. So uh, what do you Well, need? okay, uh, we're asking for uh, uh, Variances for an overhead structure pergola. Also, uh, we are within uh, the 16 foot sight line or lot line. Uh, we need to be in, I think we're about 12 feet in. So we need a variance on that. That's not noted. It, I brought in a plan and had them adjust it. I brought it in last week. So we need a variance for it to be located in the side yard. Yes, exactly. So this is an existing uh, patio that's There's being expanded, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And then you're building a pergola over the expanded? Exactly. Well, we are changing out the paving as well, but okay. uh, yes. But it's you're not expanding the patio 
No, the footprints stay in the same. Oh, okay. Basically. Yeah. And there's there's seat walls uh, yes. built into the patio. Do you guys have this? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Just sure. Any any question? Other questions from the board? I have a question. Okay. What is the uh, the height limitation on the pergolas? Uh, six, uh, 14 feet. 14 feet. Okay. Uh, and there is a 16 foot setback requirement for accessory structures. Okay. So without um, compl without complying with that 16 foot setback, and because it wasn't noticed for that specific deficiency, we would have to re-notice. Can you put it within the setback? I could, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could put it within the setback. We would prefer that we can encroach a little bit. It would make things a little easier for us. Well, were you originally saying that you're encroaching 12 feet? No. no, four feet total. Oh, four feet total. Yeah, it's supposed to be 16. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. So we're going to be into that about four feet. But I did bring in a plan with the adjustment on it last week, and I did deliver it. So if you adjust it, do you have enough room between the home and the side Abs of the pergola? Yes, absolutely. So you're comfortable with that? Very. Okay. Because we have a 15-day notice, even if the gentleman did drop off the, the updated information, we wouldn't have had sufficient correct, time right. to notice for our 15-day notification requirement. Okay. So um, that'll be an election by either the gentleman or the board to, to either table or comply with the 16-foot setback. Okay. So do you understand the issue? Yeah. So you're saying that. Uh, so if, if, noticing anyways, the notice if you want to encroach that that four feet, we're going to have to re-notice it. Okay. So uh, I would. I'll just remain in the 16 foot. We'll just shrink it. Okay. Okay. We'll just shrink it. All right. Any other questions from the board? I'll open this to the public for comment. Like to speak? Okay. I'll close the public comment and bring it back to the board for a motion. Yes. With respect, um, do you want? No, go ahead. Do you want to say? With respect to the property located at 185 Wood Edge Drive, I would move to grant the permission request for the pergola with kitchenette and seat walls because the applicant has demonstrated compliance with Section 42-7.6 standards. The structure is compatible with adjoining <coughs> properties and appropriate for the neighborhood, and will not hinder or discourage the adjacent properties in any manner. I would also move to grant the dimensional variance for the pergola to be located in a side yard. And I note that the, this is only to grant for the side yard, but the pergola location must otherwise comply with the 16 foot setback. Um, the applicant has demonstrated standards for practical difficulty. The practical difficulty is established by the large tree which exists in the rear yard, which interferes with the placement of this. Um, also, I believe since the ex existing sliding doors are located there, this is the place where the patio and pergola should be located. And um, he is simply putting, they are simply putting it in the same area where the existing patio is. Um, there's no injustice to the joining neighbors by reason of the variance and the unique circumstances I've already described and this is not self-created. If this motion is approved, application for all necessary permits must be made within one year for the pergola, and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. And I don't see where additional screening can be provided on this given its location, you know, in proximate proximity to the driveway. Support. So I have a motion in support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request has Thank modified, you. is granted. So we're calling uh, item two, 2637 Norwood. Is the applicant ready? Uh, good afternoon, board. Um, thank you for uh, considering our case. Uh, my name is Shabazz Sheikh, and uh, I'm here with my wife, Freya Malik. Uh, we live at 2637 Norwood Road. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the reason why we're here is we're requesting a variance to allow for an existing fence 
to uh, enter into our second uh, front yard. Um, we have a corner lot, um, and you know that's why we're requesting the variance. Um, so the rationale for why it's an existing structure is um, our fence contractor did initially submit uh, a building permit for the fence, and we were told that it was approved. Uh, we this pool encloses a uh, uh, this fence encloses a swimming pool. We just had construction on our swimming pool completed just this past fall. When we met with the fence contractor, the main rationale for <clears throat> extending it a little bit was because we have a swing set. Um, we have three small kids. I've got another one on the way, and year-round they always spend a lot of time on the swing set, so I really wanted to kind of have the fence enclosing that swing set for safety for our kids. Uh, the fence contractor said, no problem, we can submit it to the board, I'm sorry, submit it for a permit. If it gets approved, great. If not, we'll figure something out. So he called me back a couple you know, weeks later, said everything was approved, no problem. They went ahead and completed the job. Um, and then a couple weeks after that, I got a phone call from the uh, contractor's wife, and she uh, mentioned to me that you know the fence wasn't approved, and one of the reasons was because it encroached into that front yard. I did ask her. I was like, "How's this possible?" I thought you you know submitted for a permit, and she said she communicated to me that whoever you know initially approved it made a mistake. So that's kind of why it's an existing structure. Um, obviously, I would like to keep the uh, you know fence there. Um, it provides a safe area for my kids to play. Play with their playground. Um, Devon Road is kind of a busy road, especially during times of construction. We have a lot of people that don't live in our neighborhood that'll kind of cut through there. And, you know, especially having the pool now, we've got a lot of smaller kids that actually do come to visit. And, and it, there's always at least one or two kids that want to play on the plate on the swing set, and then the rest of the kids are in the pool. Um, I did do my best to be mindful of my neighbors across the street from where this fence is. There's not a house or anything like that. There's not even a lot for someone to you know be able to put a house in the future but I did put you know those three trees there I apologize that I don't know the name of those trees but I'm told that they're gonna get quite high I did also um, put a row of arborvitaes in front of the fence as well and then also I was trying to be mindful of my neighbors and I also put um, a layer of uh, arborvitaes or a row of arborvitaes along uh, the fence in front of her and they're actually here too um, <clears throat> You know, they're right over there, and I don't think that they have any opposition to it um, as well. Um, and I don't think that there's anything unique to this fence because we have another neighbor that's, you know, up the street that actually has a fence in their front yard, and they don't have it screened with anything. So, okay, uh, any questions from the board? It's just a small portion in the front yard, right? It's not like, do, do you know what the distance yeah. is? Um, the actual oh, width of, right yeah, there. So, it's not a huge fence, no. Six feet? Um, yeah, it's, it's not. It looks longer than six feet, though. I thought it actually looked shorter than that. Um, you mean like ex extending out of the house from, uh, yeah, from or away the from the house? It's, the it's probably a little more than six feet um, based on that, that past long. picture. Yeah, you can see I don't, sections of the fence. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of those pictures where you can actually see sections of the fence, um, you know, was before I had the, uh, the arbs planted there. Like that picture right there, there's actually grass that's there now. This picture's from the fall when I initially, or I'm sorry, earlier this year when I submitted for the, uh, for the variance. I do have pictures. Um, I thought I had emailed, but, yeah. oh, okay. I know. There's not all the ah, Okay. But I do them. have pictures. This is, them. oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, th I think you've done a nice job screening a large part of the fence. Uh, we do require that the fence be screened. I appreciate the three evergreens you've put in, but in my mind, that does not meet the screening requirement on that one section of the fence. And, and I'm wondering if you would be willing to continue the planting of the arborvitaes around that corner. Um, sure. The corner that, could you describe which corner the, is it? The, the, the front. section of the fence that you have the three evergreens that you believe are screening that section. Sure. That section on the front. Ah, okay. Um, I just think more that's facing Devon Road. Yes. Because you're looking at the Devin. front. Yeah. Okay, because sure. Because the fence is supposed to be screened from public view. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can, I can certainly just grab some more trees and yeah, right, shouldn't question. be a problem. So quick, quick question is uh, the picture that we're looking at here. 
Where is that? So this is you standing and, uh, you know, like the playground or the swing sets like right here. And you're just looking out onto Devon Street. So, that so is that's the, the opposite side of the front of the fence. So you looks like you have arborvitaes in front of the fence. Yeah. On the side. Between the road. And Correct. Fence. Yes, between the road and the fence. So that way, you know, you you can't see. It's it's on the outside of. It's closest to Devon Road, I guess, is the best way to say it. So in your earlier picture, yeah. those are the three trees yeah. where there was no screening of the fence in the earlier picture. Correct. You oh, got okay. It. Yes. So, you, so you have planted yeah. those arbor bushes. I, I did. Yeah. Okay. This is this That's was my taken. point. Yeah. It's to bring that to the. Yeah, I was just waiting for them to go on sale at Costco. So. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's what I wanted. Okay. Right. Yes. No, so and this that. picture that she has here actually kind of is the updated picture of what it looks like, uh, what it looks like now. I apologize for not. Uh, okay. No, I kind of was trying to figure that out, but I suspected that might have been the case. Sure. Two different looks times good. a year. Yep. All right. Any other questions? I'll open this to the public for comment. Anyone would like to speak on this item? I'll close the public comment and bring it back to the board. All right, Mr. Chair, I will make a motion for the, uh, in regard to the appeal for a dimensional variance at 2637 Norwood Road for the um, existing four foot high fence located in the frontage. I move that this variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome due to uh, having a fence around a pool is uh, reasonable and uh, expected. There's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by the fact that it is well screened with evergreen plantings. Uh, unique circumstances with the property have been demonstrated given that, uh, I don't know, would you say that, uh, you know, in order to fit his uh, play structure in the backyard and keep it consistent with the pool that a fence was necessary and it that is not self-created. So if the motion is approved, it must include application for all necessary permits to be made within five business days for the existing fence and additional evergreen plantings may be required to screen the existing fence from public view, although it does appear that you have put additional plantings in. Support. Motion and support, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you guys. And thank you for your good work. Calling item three, two, seven, 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 Warwick. Hello, uh, I'm Christopher Aranda, and I am the contractor that will be installing this fence okay. at two, seven, seven, Warwick Drive. So could you describe what, uh, Variants you need? Yes, so we, my customers have two dogs, and we were told we needed to do a variance for uh, a fence to be at least two feet off the property lines, because as you know, the yards aren't too big, you know, around on Warwick, and you know, the dogs need to be able to exercise, and it's also safety, so the dogs don't roam into the road, and yeah. So, because uh, I, when I was discussing with the staff this morning, is it two feet off the property line? It'll be two feet off the property okay. line. Yes. And the rear property line, there's a soccer field. It's for the, where the school is. And it's all, I think there's tennis courts back there as well, but they're, you gotta be more than 75 feet away from that property line, so. So you're enclosing the entire yard? Yes. Yeah, well, the rear, yes. Two feet off the lot line? Yes. And four foot high black chain link. Do you have any plans for landscaping? Any screening or? No. I, I do not. Other homeowners do though. Fence is required to be screened under our ordinance. I don't think. So, so maybe you could come to the podium. You could give us your name. 
My name is Marian Mooring. Um, we would also like to just note that the variance will help us to keep my gardens in my yard. Okay. I have a um, vegetable garden and I have a woodland garden that have come with, with me for the past 15 years. And if we don't get the variance, then those gardens are cut out of my yard. So uh, would you be amenable to screening the fence? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So that, that would, so you wouldn't be able to uh, see it from the street? Yes, we would screen from the street for sure. Okay. So that's the, the two feet off the property line allows you to do that? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Any other questions from the board? Okay, I'll open this to the public. Does anyone like to comment on this item? I'll close the public hearing and bring it. Uh, yeah, we welcome all comments, if you, if you, but you'll have to come up and uh, do that on the record. Give your name and address. If you made the trip here, I want to make sure that you get to Give your comment. Uh, my name is April Lohr. I also live in the neighborhood um, and have known the Moorings for 13 years. Um, they are wonderful people and I think the variants would support what they're trying to do with their dogs. They do have a rescue, which is important for them to keep within the fence. Um, knowing how their property is set up <clears throat> and knowing how friendly they are with um, other plants and their plantings, um, I could absolutely see them putting the bushes and the variances in. Well, thank you for that support. Okay. Anyone else would like to speak? So I'll close the public hearing and bring back to the board. So let me just, so you, you're going to leave, so you're two feet off the property line. That, that is enough for you to provide screening, you think, just two feet? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you, but maybe I'm wrong. What, do you, what are you proposing for the screening? I mean, typically we look for something like Arbor Bitey. How are you gonna be able to fit that in two feet? You could do, you could also do the uh, privacy slats for the fence, no. is that? No, well, it has to be like a... It has to be landscape screening. Yeah. Okay. The so slats would not work. Or you could move the fence move in, fence in another, a little bit more to, give to allow for the screening that's required. A foot or two. Okay. <laughs> uh, why, sure, why don't you come on up? You can uh, speak to the screening. My name's Scott Mooring. I'm the homeowner. Um, sure. So with the uh, from the edges of the corner of the house to the side yard, we can put arborvitaes there to hide it from the road. Is that where you want the screening? Is that so? So it would have to be screened from the neighbors too. So mm -hmm. not only from the road, but from oh, the neighbors too. So it would be all sides. Yeah, all around the fence. So could we put the screening <coughs> on the inside of the fence? And no, then it wouldn't be screening. The then it, oh, then it sorry, would be yeah, right, something right. that you saw. Okay. And then everybody else would see the fence. I understand. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It, it might it might be best best to move the fence in a little bit for the sure. screening. Okay. It would help us make a decision. I think that you would like. Yeah. So what do you think? Okay. Yeah, we'll move it in whatever you think is the right um, dimension to allow for. Arborvitaes, yeah. So, so we, yeah. we can't, yeah, we can't tell you. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll say in our experience, you need more than two feet. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I don't know, there are discussions with the staff. Uh, I think five feet was suggested. Is that? Clearly, oftentimes we'll say at least it has to be four feet right. off of a side lot line right. or a sidewalk. So I think 14, or four feet, excuse me, four feet is sufficient to accommodate the growth in the base of an evergreen. Okay. So, so are we uh, agreed on four feet? Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah four feet. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Fine. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's see, did I open the public here? Yep, we had the people come up. Yep, okay, so uh, 
are we ready for a motion? Yeah. Based on the helpful discussion with the homeowner and the team? Yes, I will make a motion for this. I'll start with the permission request at 2777 <coughs> Warwick Drive. Um, I'm going to move that the permission request for the proposed dog enclosure fence be approved as submitted. Um, this is in compliance with 42-7.6 standards because this accessory structure is very common to the neighborhood and actually will help to uh, contain the dogs, which will be uh, an asset to the neighborhood and as far as safety um, for people walking by. Um, for the dimensional variance, I'm going to move that that also be approved as submitted. Um, the applicant demonstrated all the standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because it, because it would mean that the family is not able to utilize uh, their backyard with their dogs. And um, there is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that this is gonna be screened from public view with evergreens. There are unique circumstances with the property given um, its location in the township and the fact that this family does um, have a need for an enclosure in the backyard to contain their pets. This is not self-created due to the reasons stated and I will just add that all necessary permits should be made within one year for the proposed fence and all permits should be obtained prior to construction and it will have to be screened um, from the public 20, you know, 12 months out of the year and I'll just note that the, the variance is in compliance with what the discussion was here um, during the meeting. Yeah, so 12 feet, I guess, is what we... The four foot... Four, four, four feet. Foot, four, four feet, foot, feet off. Four feet in. Right. Four. Four. Support. Oh. <laughs> so I have a motion and support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request as modified is granted. Thank you. So calling next item, item uh, number four, 7320 uh, Wing Lake Road. Hello, I'm Derek Kuroka from DC Illuminations on behalf of the homeowner for 7320 Wing Lake Road. We are seeking approval for a generator that is set uh, 12 feet off the house instead of 10 feet. It's enclosed in a pad with air conditioners and the pool equipment and it's fully uh, surrounded by everybody's around the unit and the whole pad and then also from the street. So uh, I, I live in Wing Lake Road and I drove by today. Uh, you can see, you can still see the generator from so, the, so is there any way to... I think he's still going to, and the, the driveway's in now, but you can't see the driveway here, but he's going to, he still has the backyard open. I think he's doing some work. He's going to enclose from the street also the arbor riders are coming up across the front. He'll continue that. Do you want me to put some more arbor riders around that? Or? Absolutely. So, so you got to challenge it because it's white. So it's re really easy to see. There may there is not. And at the, at the, our ordinance requires that it has to be screened from public view at the time of installation installation so if you could enhance the screening there so that maybe another row in front of those like flip flop might might need yeah might need a little be a little taller too it's I, not a problem I think I the tight. okay any other questions from the board so open this to the public so anyone from the public that would like to speak on this item close public hearing and bring it back to the board in regards to the I'll make a motion uh, in regards to the appeal at 7320 Wing Lake uh, Road. For the dimensional variance um, <clears throat> for the existing ground mounted mechanical unit of a generator, I move that the variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty. Um, because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome um, because without a, the generator, <laughs> actually, which is something definitely necessary, would prevent reasonable use of the property. Um, there's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors because the equipment uh, is screened and the screening will be enhanced <laughs> to keep it from public view. Uh, unique circumstances with uh, the property. Again, uh, the generator was put with the other equipment, um, so that would make sense and that would be something that's unique, not necessarily attached to the home. And because of it, it is not uh, self-created. 
Uh, if approved, the motion also includes application for all necessary permits must be made within five business days for the existing generator. And additional evergreen plantings uh, are required to screen the existing generator from public view and must meet or exceed the height of the unit at the time of planting. Support. I motion and support. Any discussion? <coughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, calling the next item, item 5605 Kenmore. I'm Stephen Bottomy from Creative Brick on behalf of 5605 Kenmore. Uh, we're seeking to uh, install a mini split system next to the previously approved pool house. Uh, technically isn't currently installed at the moment. We just had it on site. The, um, we thought it was the best interest of the clients. Then it doesn't have to worry about winterizing it and worry about moisture in there over the winter time and expansion and contraction. Uh, the existing screening is pretty dense all the way around the structure in the backyard already. And there's also an additional like landscape garden wall that also screens it as well. We also looked at doing a mounting it on the actual structure, but we were told that that doesn't make a difference. And actually mounting it on the ground will actually help screen it a little bit more and help uh, shield some of the sound. We have any additional questions from the board? Yeah, I don't. Uh, could you please explain the concerns about expansion and contraction? Uh, that's just more for like when we winterize the building and then having it go through the cold and warm with drywall inside there. So we just so wanted this, to keep but this it is a going to be adjacent space. to that, right? So you're saying that the that the, the pool house ex is going to expand and contract. That's the concern. It's going to bump into the. No, no, just like the interior environment of the structure. Okay, because this states it's uh, it's located behind a previously approved pool house. Are you telling us that's actually inside the pool house? No, it is servicing the pool house. This is like a mechanical unit, so it's going to be air conditioning and then heating it in the wintertime. So instead of the people, the homeowners having to winterize the pipes because there's a bathroom out there and a sink, so then they don't have to worry about that. Okay. So basically they can set it to 60 degrees or 50 degrees in the they're winter time when they're not out the, there, they're gonna be able to control the temperature. Temperature on inside You know, and sometimes you get those freezing temperatures in November, October, they're still gonna be trying to utilize it, so this way they don't have to worry about, shoot, we gotta winterize those pipes. And then when you winterize things, you know, when you open up a cabin and things like that, sometimes it can, you know, you go back and look at it, and sometimes there can be issues with the drywall after with the freezing and thawing and everything. Okay. Okay, and I just have a comment. I, I guess I'm the landscaping police tonight. The, the screening for units like this have to be immediately around the units, okay? The fact that there's landscaping over to the side does not screen that unit, okay? So you'll have to plant arborvitaes around that unit so that you cannot see it. From the property line, correct? Can't see it, period. It's From supposed to be totally view. screened. Right, you won't be able to. Well, no, you can't say it's behind a house, so we don't have to uh, no, building. It's, so those existing evergreens are screening it. No, I'm telling you, you're going to have to put additional plantings around the unit itself. Okay, that's what we require. Okay. So, so was that a yes? I, I wasn't sure. Did you say? Yeah, that? I mean, okay, that's what's required. Okay, isn't it? If you can't see it from the from the neighboring properties or. We require these to be screened so you can't see them, okay? You may have landscaping 15, 20 feet away, all right? But we can't, these units can't just hang out there by themselves. They're screened. Everybody has landscaping around the outside of their homes or around the perimeter, but we still screen the units everywhere. Would you? Okay. So I'll uh, open this to the public. Uh, anyone like to speak on this item? Close the public hearing, bring it back to the board for a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion. Um, in regard to the appeal at 5605 Kenmore Road uh, for the uh, existing ground mounted mechanical unit or, or not existing, um, I move the variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all of the standards for practical difficulty because 
compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because it would require the residents to winterize or risk you know uh, winter pipe damage there is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of it it, it will be adequately adequately screened um, uh, unique circumstances with the property have been demonstrated given that um, there is a pool and pool house that are going to be used in you know the when summer and winter seasons and this is not self-created if approved um, uh, application for all necessary permits must be made within five business days for the existing generator and additional evergreen plannings will be required to screen the generator from public view um, and must meet or exceed the height of the unit at the time of planning which is you know immediately around the, the ground mounted unit Support. motion and support any discussion all those in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed congratulations your request as modified as granted I don't know if it really matters because we're going to pull the permit pretty quickly, but it technically it's not existing. Well, it's what? That's true. It's not existing. So yeah, you could so have up to a year to apply for the permit. Is what we're still going to do it within yeah. two days or Monday, probably. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thank sir. you. Thank you. So we'll call it the next item, item uh, 62767 Turtle Lake. Good evening, board. Jason, JCB Design and Build, on behalf of the Alamaris at 2767 Turtle Lake Drive. Um, we're looking to have a 20 by 20 foot, uh, 20 by 20, 14 foot high pergola located um, outside of all the setbacks and a one foot high spa, which is centered there in the backyard, um, over 16 feet from all the property lines as well. Evergreen screenings around the entire property, uh, densely planted arborvitaes are going in on the landscape plan, and uh, this is very common for, for this uh, subdivision. Both are. Thank you. Any questions from the board? I'll open this to the public for comment. Anyone that would like to speak on this item? Close the public comment and ask the board uh, for a motion. With respect to the property located at 2767 Turtle Lake Drive, I would move to grant the permission request for the pergola and spa because the applicant has demonstrated compliance with section 42-7.6 standards. Specifically, the proposed structure is compatible and appropriate to the neighborhood and it will not hinder or discourage adjacent properties and it will not impact or cause any nuisances. If approved, the application for all necessary permits must be made within one year and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. And based upon the landscaping plan, I'm not going to require any additional screening. Support. Motion and support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is granted. Thank you, board. Have a great evening. So we're calling item 7, 163 South Berkshire. I told you 745. Thank you. Perfect. I'm Marilyn Ross, and we want to put in an oversized garage on our side yard. We don't really have a backyard, but we have a lot of land there. The setbacks are over 50 feet on the one and over 100 feet on both other sides, so it shouldn't be an issue there. Uh, what's the, the structure at the bottom there with the G on it? Is that another? That's one? the existing garage, which is over 100 years old, and it's in perfect shape. But it's, it's size not for current cars, or we have a tractor for the yard, and things don't really fit in as well, but it's in perfect shape with, see how charming? And I hate to take it down, because right there, that's the only thing you see from the road. We're pretty much treed all around. Um, and right there is where the foam pole and all the electrical is behind it. So I'd like to turn that into a shed and then have the big garage for the tractor and yard stuff, recreational equipment. So we'd use the existing driveway, you just turn left, we have about a vacant acre that way, so that garage is straight ahead. We're gonna use the same driveway and just go a little left to the new garage. Uh, I asked the staff about this, the size of your lot's uh, 1.82 acres? Mm -hmm. yep. We have 650 foot of frontage, but no real backyard. The, the existing garage is about five feet from the lot line, so there's no real backyard. It's all side, Aiken, side yard. 
about an acre of side yard. Yeah, that's See a there? very large lot there. We're one of the oldest homes from um, 1912, back when the Purple Gang started in there. And then hmm. heard a lot of nice stories about the pond and Kentucky Derby racehorses going around the pond. And oh, wow. Very charming. I'm the third owner since 1912. People don't leave that house. <laughs> Good for you. Mm -hmm. If only Bob Taylor was here, he'd yeah, love oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> he'd love to comment on this yeah. property. Uh, any other questions from the board about the house or the purple gang? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll open this to the public. Anyone like to comment on this? I'll close the public hearing then, bring it back for discussion, motion. Can make a motion for this one. Um, I will start with the uh, permission request at 163 South Berkshire Berkshire Road. Um, I'm going to move that, or uh, before that, I should say, based on the information presented, the applicant demonstrated compliance with Section 42-7.6 standards because the um, accessory structure is, you know, a garage is appropriate to the neighborhood and it is going to be screened, so it's not going to hinder or, um, you know, cause nuisance to any neighbors. As far as the dimensional variance is concerned for the accessory structure exceeding 50% of the ground floor of the main building, I'm gonna move that that variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant demonstrated all standards for practical difficulty. Um, compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because of the fact that this is such a large lot. And in theory, the house could be knocked down, a bigger one could be built, and they could have a garage that would not exceed uh, the size of the home. And, you know, frankly, the history of the home is, uh, I think, worth preserving here. There is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that this structure is going to be screened and it is a common structure that we see on homes. Uh, unique circumstances of the property have been given, demonstrated the size of the property. Um, and the historic nature of the uh, buildings on there. And this is not self-created due to the reasons that I have stated above. Um, I'm just gonna note that you should get the permits within one year and they should be obtained prior to construction. And you will have to file a single family affidavit uh, with the township just saying that no one's living in that uh, structure. Oh, and how do I go about doing that? Will you tell me? We can certainly help you when you come apply for your permit. Yeah. Support. So I have a motion and support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. So calling item eight, 4296 Stone Lake. Hmm. Is the applicant here for item eight? I'd like to, if they're not here, I'd like to move that we put this at the bottom of our agenda. Support. So I have motion and support uh, to move to the end of the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll move this uh, item eight to the end of the agenda. Calling item nine, one five four one, Sodden Lake Road. Hi there. Uh, I'm Drew Jones. I'm a resident at 1541 Soden Lake Drive, speaking on behalf of the homeowner, homeowner Shi Zhang. Uh, we're requesting a permission to build an accessory structure, a uh, shed that would go in the backyard. It's within all of the setback lines. Um, it has screening that already exists around it. And I brought with me today a letter of support from our homeowners association. Um, I did not bring anything written from our neighbors, but I've spoken to all three of our adjacent neighbors and they all uh, supported the shed. Uh, any questions from the board? Are there other sheds in the neighborhood? No, this would be the first one. Is that ready? Yeah. For our record, can I have it brought up? Yeah. So I'll open this for public comment. Anyone like to speak on this item? Close the public comment and bring it back to the Mr. board. Coming up to the podium. Oh, sorry. I'm Suzanne Goldstein, 4348 Pine Tree Trail. I'm the vice president of the Homeowners Association. I have spoken to the three adjacent property owners. They 
have spoken with Drew. Um, we're all in favor of what he has planned to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I uh, close the public hearing too soon. Does anyone else would like to speak on this item? I will close it then for a second time and bring it back to the board for further discussion or motions. I talked to on the phone today. Thank you. And you feel it's adequately screened? I didn't. I, it's hard to. Uh, yeah, I do feel that. Do you want to reference the letter we got from HOA wanting existing and proposed screening to be maintained? <clears throat> So uh, there's a letter uh, that we have from your homeowners association that uh, seems that has a couple of conditions in it. Have, have you gotten a, uh, been in communication with the association? Yeah, so the conditions are saying that as long as it follows the township's screening guidelines, um, and then also uh, if we needed to add more, that view to the rear right there, that's um, the back of the house. So uh, there's another house directly behind us. We have um, quite a bit of existing screening already. Uh, this picture was taken earlier in the spring, so you can see how it gets a little more sparse during the, the winter. During, I mean, right now, I mean, you can't see through it at all. It's, it's pretty dense. Um, so they said if we needed to add additional screening during the winter, that would be a condition. But, um, you know, we're good uh, friends with the house behind us, so I figured we would be able to figure that out. So the requirement is it's got to be screened 12 months out of the year. Sure. So the fact that it's, you've got some uh, trees that would fill in now and then go bare in the winter mm -hmm. would indicate that you're probably going to need to add some evergreens. Okay. We so, can that, do that. so that you meet the requirement 12 months out of the year. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the, where you can see that's exactly where the shed's going to go. So you can see that there's that, um, denser yellow, uh, the bush with the yellow leaves. I don't know if that, I don't yeah, know how exactly to judge. In the winter, in the, 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 prob, the reason why we ask for evergreen is because in the winter, even though, okay, you know, it's you can't completely see through, there's sort of some coverage. The idea really is that we want it fully screened so that people can't see it, whether it's spring, winter, summer, you know, it doesn't matter. Because if you took that in April, you know, that all that green is not going to be there in the winter time, and that's going to make it more visible. And you might have a neighbor now who doesn't mind, but then in the future, you have somebody else that moves in. And really, the idea is people like Bloomfield Township, because it's green, because we have open spaces, your neighbor's, you know, shed and yeah, you know, other sure, no structures are not right on top of you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so with that said, I can make a motion if we're... I think we're ready. Go okay. right ahead. So, okay, with the, regard to this request at yeah, 1541 Soden Lake Drive, I'm going to move that the shed up through. The applicant demonstrated compliance with 42-7.6 standards because the shed um, is going to be within the setbacks and will be screened 12 months out of the year um, by evergreen screening, so it will not uh, hinder or discourage the adjacent use of uh, neighbors um, nearby. The application for all your permits should be made within one year and obtained prior to construction. And you will have to supplement uh, the trees that you have there so that it is screened 12 months out of the year. Okay. Support. Motion and support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is modified as granted. Thank you. Have a good evening. Calling the next item, item 10, 1, 2, Two two West Long Week. Hello, I am David Popolier with Thomas Siebold and Associates. I'm here representing the owners Bruce Milness and Fair Radom um, for variances to keep accessory structures on an existing lot where we tore down the primary residence, um, and also on a couple retaining wall heights that exceed the four foot height regulation. Um, I'll start with the accessory structures. Um, so we're looking to keep the accessory structures, the guest house at the front of the road that was built in 1924. I think it's kind of a staple of Long Lake Road as you drive down, everybody's seen it. 
the first like four houses all have those carriage homes and kind of gives a unique look to to I think Bloomfield Township. Um, also another one if you go back one if you mm -hmm. go, the koi pond, um, the koi pond in the upper right hand corner. Um, that's its current condition now after the home's been demoed. Our intention is to keep that. If you look at the picture below, that was before we tore the whole old house down in the summer when it's bloomed. And, you know, it really kind of sets a characteristic of the lot. Um, and we're trying to keep that and kind of keep that charm to the, to the existing lot, which also ties into the trellis. Uh, the trellis is right nearby there. Unfortunately, I didn't have any good pictures of it in the summer when it was all covered in... Mm -hmm and flowers and greens and looks beautiful. Um, but we've actually designed the home, the new home proposed home around um, the Koi Pond in order to keep it and to utilize the retaining wall that's there to tie in portions of the new retaining wall, which is one of the reasons, another reason that I am here, um, to keep the existing grades of where the home was or where the old home was with the motor court and the garage and the finished floor heights and we do have some, you know, existing topo grades that need to be dealt with. And we did that by utilizing the koi pond, extending some of the retaining walls in order to keep the home and the estate, as you can see, you know, really, I think what's going to be a prize of Bloomfield Township. Um, the last part is, I think the last one we have, the um, lake shed that's existing that's been um, there for a long time. Um, they'd like to utilize that and keep that, um, restore the terrace on top, um, re-leveling the stones and um, making it beautiful and integrating the new landscape around it um, and really kind of keeping the character of the existing lot. So when I went over this, is the grade being changed uh, no. as part of the, okay. Don't understand the retaining to the wall. retaining walls. Yeah, I couldn't understand uh, I, the need for it, those because it, why wouldn't you simply grade that back so you don't have a 15 foot retaining wall? It's there? nine. Oh, not I that know. it matters. Oh, <laughs> it's still that's above four. Yeah, that's like <laughs> you want to point out where the 15 walls are? Yeah. Can you go? So, yeah, this is gonna be hard. So, one of them's right there. Yeah, so the koi pond's here. Uh -huh. And if you look at the koi pond picture, right, right. it it kind of goes, that wall is gonna get cut back a little and continue and then the new wall will come so the grade of the motor court can sit at the existing grade where it was now. It was retained before, but we cut some of that wall back in order to tear the house down. So it's an extension of kind of what was already there. It's a little bit longer because the house now is gonna be a little closer to the lake than it was before. So that was the need for the new wall. And we took it to a point to be able to incorporate the large motor, the, I won't say large, the motor court. It's a good size motor court. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, Put a lot of motors in there. <laughs> but, but so you're not changing the grade though, because I was I confused. Not, it looked uh, to me like you were going to have to. The new house finished floor that. is actually like eight inches lower okay. than the old house finished floor. And the grades of the motor court are the exact same that they were before. Okay. okay. That's and the, helpful. The other area where I have a the retaining wall issue, uh, it's back here, is the, what? I think we have a site plan in there, right? Yeah. That's even going to be harder to see. But right here, coming off the house, and there was a walkout off that side on the old house. On this house, we're kind of mimicking that same thing. And so we have the terrace coming off the back and there's a section there where you come out and there's a staircase that's going to go down to the walkout from the upper terrace. That, that wall, there is a section of it that's nine feet tall. But as the stairs go down, the walls go down with it. So it's not, you know, a massing of a, you know, nine foot wall that's 20 feet long. It's really as it goes down with the 15 treads, the wall is going down with it. Sorry. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Any other questions on the board? So at its highest, it's nine feet. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a significant difference than 15. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll open this to the public for comment. Who would like to comment on this item? I'll close the public comment and bring it back to the board. 
Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Uh, for to approve the dimensional variance required to install retaining walls with a maximum feet of nine feet high and to keep existing accessory structure without principal structure. Um, for this dimensional variance, I move that uh, the variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all the standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome due to the unique uh, topography of this lot. There's no injustice to adjoining neighbors by reason that this is consistent with other homes in the area and uh, the orientation of the home on the lot. Unique circumstances with the property have been demonstrated, uh, again, because of the sloping topography, and this is not self-created. So if approved, the motion must include application for all necessary permits to be made within one year, and all permits must be attained prior to construction for the retaining walls. Additional evergreen screenings shall be required to screen the wall from public view. Support. Motion and support, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. So calling item 11, 835 Harsdale. Hi, I'm Sabrina uh, from Mosier Design. On behalf of the clients at 835 Harsdale, um, we are seeking a dimensional variance um, to install a shed in the side yard. Um, the hardship is that the clients are avid gardeners and need somewhere close to their gardening area that they can store their tools and such. Because the property is so big, it has no impact on the neighboring properties and is already well screened along with kind of additional that is currently in the landscape plan um, that should be probably installed about this fall. Um, the proposed screen shed is within the 16 foot side yard setback and putting it all the way to the rear yard would make it impractical for use. Because it impacts no one on the surrounding properties, we think this is a reasonable request. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions from the board? <clears throat> I'll she, open she, this. Uh, uh, just she mentioned she was seeking a dimensional variance. So I just want to clarify it as a it is a permission request, right? The variance it's not on your sheet. The variance is for being located in a side yard. Okay. It's both permission and dimensional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. both. Variance, yeah, too. So I'll open this to the public. Does anyone like to comment on this item? I'll uh, close the public hearing and bring it back for so discussion. I'll just, um, to clarify here, so the variance as far as the township is concerned is not as far as the setback, because you're saying the lot is so big, it's because it's in the side yard. Yes. Correct. But yes. we do have a letter from the homeowner association, mm -hmm. which talks about the deed restrictions, which we don't enforce, but they have noted that they're in opposition to it because it is in the side yard which goes against their deed restrictions. Okay, I was not made aware of that. Okay, well, I mean, and again, that's not our yeah. you know, concern really, but just to put that out there for the discussion. Good to know, thank you. Do we have any drawings of what the shed looks like? Copy of the letter. Yeah. You have, do you have a have picture? A Could you show us what the shed looks like again? Do you have the picture of it? In the side yard. Wow. Is it the, it's that color? It's kind of a grayish, do you know? They're still figuring out the color. So the color hasn't been finalized. Have you talked to adjacent neighbors at all about? I have not. Um, I believe Matt has, um, and they're well known, but I don't know 100% to tell you today. I, uh, I'm really, knowing that neighborhood, I just can't picture a shed like that in that neighborhood. I mean, it just, I mean, particularly, you know, given all the new uh, construction that's going on there and the nature of the homes and I don't know, does anybody else, is anybody else shocked that, you know, there's a shed going up in that neighborhood? I mean, that's just not a shed neighborhood by any stretch of the imagination. I agree. I mean, if it was made out of like stone or 
is Something your like that. is your concern about the style of the shed rather than Absolutely. the location? I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, if it is it something that if the location is approved and then it just we have to get a second approval for the style, I I'm not sure. Yeah. Do we like to I, do it all together? The table. <clears throat> For me, it's the fact that it's in a uh, side yard. Right, and, and that's why I was asking about adjacent neighbors. Um, and I know it's within the setback. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of hard, I mean, from this drawing, it's hard to see. I mean, is it like tucked in where, because you had mentioned that you thought yeah. it, it would be. So you can kind of see the side property screening right there. And then I don't know if we can go back to the plan. Oh, wow. Uh, just for the view. Um, well, you can use this pole tool. Okay. And so then we have some, so we have, in addition to the existing, we have actually more screening going here, as well as kind of a few pines that will be going along the front of it as well. And you had stated that the necessity of putting it in the side uh, lot is, mm. is mm to be close to the garden? Or? Yeah, mainly for the access to this space, because obviously being behind the house would put it some, anywhere past this line. So that path with how long the house is, this makes it more functional and useful for them to be able to garden in this area. And if you move it closer to the house, then that impacts the screening. The screening then goes into the garden area. So that's why you've got it further away. It's kind of, yeah, that was kind of the reason for that location. Um, we went through a few design iterations on this. And because of the existing screening along that property, as well as creating kind of this nice little garden area where there are existing uh, fences as well as kind of the new fences, um, it helps kind of that space. Could, could we go back to the picture of the shed again? Like I said, I that's not a, they haven't ordered anything. They've been still working on it. Yeah, that that's... Because uh, their house is a little bit more of a modern house. Yeah, it so, seems like that's inconsistent mm -hmm. with what's there. and That's my concern. I'm not sure what that material is, but it kind of just looks like a... Yeah, that's that's a kind of... Industrial shed. No. Right, it looks like an industrial shed or something you'd see in a... Yeah. Well, uh, you know, work, yeah. work site. Well, I, I, I'm, I don't want to restrict people's ability to garden in their yards and stuff like that. My only concern is, you know, as, as was already stated, it just seems inconsistent with the neighborhood and certainly no matter what it is, unless it's an art, architectural masterpiece, I think we've got to make sure that no one else can see it. Our, the residents can, you know, the owners can enjoy it as much as they want, but if there's other people in the neighborhood who just wouldn't appreciate it, we just want to make sure that it's screened throughout the year yeah. so that nobody else can see it. I'd like to table it and talk with the client, the homeowners and see the actual design that they're looking at getting. And obviously- And the color, I, I think the color yes. would help too, because it seems like that would stand out more. And I can make sure that obviously your guy, you want obviously it to kind of almost stay consistent with the style of the house. So it kind of looks as if it's one lot. Yeah. Similar. Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. stand out as exactly. much. Exactly. I, mean, I mean, ideally it wouldn't <clears throat> be there, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's what the homeowner association wants, but to yeah. accommodate then, Try to make them the style, make it blend in, you know, as much as possible. And then obviously the screening is going to be the paramount yeah. thing. So, yeah, with this conversation, I'd like to table it. Okay. So that's good. Right. You're right. That's great. Move yeah. to table. Support. So if she requests, can she just do that on her own? Do we need to? Well, I was no, going to suggest table. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There yeah. was a support. All right. So I have a motion and support uh, to table. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 You're... Uh, Request this table. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so here much. for the next one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm also here on behalf of the homeowners at 5555 Shadow Lane. Um, we are seeking um, approval to 
place um, decorative landscape piers outside of the required front yard setback. These are simply decorative piers um, that enhance the architecture of the home. Um, and they are extremely common within the neighborhood. Um, there is no impact to adjoining neighbors. And in fact, we think this will be a tasteful ed addition um, and in keeping with the neighborhood. And non-illuminated, correct? Non-illuminated. <laughs> Any other questions? We'll open this to the public for comment. Who would like to speak on this item? How tall are they again? Three feet. Three feet. Three feet. Okay. And there oh. will be a hedge coming off the sides of them as well. Close the public hearing and bring it back for a motion or discussion. Uh, I can make a motion. Here. Okay. So for the, um, I'll start with the permission request at five 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 Shadow Lane. I'm going to move that the proposed piers be approved as submitted. Based on the information presented, the applicant demonstrated compliance with Section forty two dash seven point six because this accessory structure is common to this uh, part of the. Uh, township and will complement the neighborhood. As far as the dimensional variance is concerned for the proposed piers in the front yard, I'm going to move that that also be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant demonstrated all the standards for practical difficulty uh, because the uh, compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be um, duly burdensome because of the fact that the uh, that this is a, a common structure that we see in this neighborhood and it would also help to demarcate where the driveway is uh, along Shadow Lane. There is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that this is a common structure and this will enhance um, the appearance of the home. The unique circumstances with the property have been demonstrated uh, given its location in the township and um, the you know need to, to have the driveway um, you know, easily standing out. This is not self-created due to the reasons stated above. And the last thing that I will add is that you should get all of your permits within one year and obtain prior to construction. Support. Motion and support, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. So calling item 136590, Indian Wood Trail. Good evening. I'm Joe with Antonelli Landscape, representing uh, Adam Becker at 6590 Indian Wood Trail. Um, we are seeking approval for the construction of an 18 by 14 accessory structure at 12 foot tall in the backyard. Um, that is over 50 feet away from all lot lines and um, abiding to all setback ordinances. Uh, the kitchenette counter within the structure is 36 inches tall. Um, the location of the structure will not impact adjacent lots and is screened by existing established trees and landscaping around this lot. And we trust that the project will enhance the property and benefit the homeowners and future ones. <clears throat> um, hope to answer any questions. Be simple. Any questions? I'll open the public hearing. Anyone would like to comment on this agenda item? I'll close the public hearing and bring it back for discussion or a motion. I'll Did you say there was screening? I'm sorry? Did you say there is screening? Yeah, so um, it's 50 feet, a minimum of 50 feet from all uh, property lines, and there is um, a screening established around the whole property line in the backyard. So it, it, it cannot be seen by any homeowners. All year round? Yeah. Okay. Did you hear anything from the homeowner association? I don't, you don't know. know anything about oh, okay. that. Yeah, I, I was just curious. I just had a note here that they we were waiting for comment, but they may not have said anything. I'll make a motion. Um, All right, thank you. In regard to the appeal <clears throat> at uh, 6590 Indian Wood Trail for the uh, proposed pavilion with the kitchenette, I move the request be approved as submitted. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate compliance with Section 42-76 standards because the size of the accessory structure is compatible uh, with adjoining properties based on the being within the 12-foot high um, restriction. Also, the uh, use of the accessory structure is appropriate to the neighborhood as this is a very common structure um, in, in Bloomville Township neighborhoods. Um, 
if approved application for all necessary permits must be made within one year and all permits must be obtained prior to installation and as discussed additional evergreen screening may be required to screen the uh to screen the kitchen uh, uh um, pavilion pavilion with kitchenette uh and must meet or exceed the height of the pavilion and kitchenette at the time of uh, planting support motion and support uh, any discussion all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. <clears throat> any opposed congratulations your request is granted thank you calling item 14 3770 lake crest drive good evening board my name is ben fournier i'm the owner of fournier home enhancements and i'm here on behalf of my clients at 3770 lake crest drive we are seeking a variance to build a deck where an existing deck is located currently um, the variance is in request because at Crest Lake Road, we are the house itself is only approximately 36 feet off of the lot line, and we need to be 40 because it's considered frontage. So we're hoping to get the variance to go to that 36 foot mark, which is the corner of the house. So the deck where the existing deck is lines up current with the house, not exceeding the house. So you're proposing knocking down what's existing and building something new. Exactly, yep. But not, not exceeding where the existing deck sure. is located. So their permits, they could get it within one year, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, just because I'm here, it's not within five days. Okay. Oh, I, I apologize. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, but thank you for that. Any other questions? I'll open the public hearing. Anyone would like to comment on this item? Close the public hearing and bring it back for a motion or discussion. I can make a motion here. Um, I'm going to move that the dimensional variance at 3770 Lake Crest Drive be approved as um, requested. The applicant did demonstrate all the standards for practical difficulty. The compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance is unduly burdensome because this is already an existing deck which is encroaching four feet, the encroachment um, is not going to be expanded. There's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors because of the fact that this is going to be a replacement of what's already existing with no additional encroachment. The unique circumstances of the property have been demonstrated um, given the age of the home and the uh, multiple frontages and the existing deck. Uh, this is not self-created due to the reasons stated above and you will have one year to get your permits and you should get them before you start construction of this um, accessory structure and the and i guess support that's support i have a motion to support any discussion all those in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed congratulations your request is granted thank you board so calling item uh, 152599 warwick Good evening, board. Thanks for entertaining our request. We would like to put a shed on the side lot uh, four feet from the side boundary. It's got 50 feet from the rear boundary. And then the rear, uh, is, we're on this division, subdivision line. And behind us is a quarry, the, so the homes are 15 to 20 feet below uh, elevation. And so those are views on the left uh, upper corner is where the shed we'd like to go. That's looking east. In the right uh, corner is looking from the driveway. So the red, there's already Arba Vitae uh, at the end of the driveway. We will put it behind the Arba Vitae. So you won't be able to see the shed from the road. And then this is looking uh, north. And so this is, uh, so it will be in front of the Arba Vitae with the street on the left. And then our neighbor has asked us to put Arba Vitae. Uh, we had shrubbery there. There's a, a, a fairly large tree there, but uh, our neighbor has asked us to put Arba Vitae uh, so it would block his view, which it seems reasonable. And next. And that's just another view of the front. That's a view from, that's our, uh, our east, our north neighbor looking into our yard. And that's where the Arba Vitae would go. And then that is, and we chose this, sorry, we chose the side lot. We have a pretty narrow lot, so we have a sunroom. So side is really the only place we could put it. 
in the back corner would be ugly. We get a lot of deer, we get pheasants. And we want to allow the, the animals to run without getting interfered with a, a, a shed. But <clears throat> we did have the homeowner association, one of the reps visited us, also asked us to put a Ruby Day on the side lot. So, but I don't have any formal documentation. So can I go back to the picture? I think we had three of them. Uh, so back, back oh, up. Sorry, right there. I know what you're looking oh, for. That one. Bottom. So sorry. on that bottom picture, uh, the the trees and the greenery that are uh, in the, the center there is that on your property or your yes, neighbor's that's, property? That's in my property, looking north uh, north west. And are, are those evergreen? Those are evergreens. They're about okay. 12 feet tall. Okay. They're very mature. They're about 30 years old. Any other questions from the board? I mean, my only question would be um, as far as bringing it in so that it would be within the setback. You're just saying you don't setback have Setback would be 16 feet would right. put it into the patio. Okay. So the, the, we don't have as large a lot space, as, sure. as some of my uh, neighbors. I guess piggybacking off of that question, I don't understand why you can't locate it in the backyard and comply with the ordinance. Yeah. Well, we have two electrical phone um, poles on each corner of the back property that um, we've actually had electrical wires fall. Um, several times the um, company has come out and put out fires in our backyard because of the electrical lines falling. And so our fear is fire. And so if you go 16 feet off the back fence, off the utility line, it's in the middle of the yard. So it's we, we wouldn't put a shed in. That's really the only place that's a reasonable place for a shed. And then that's what the shed would look like. It's a kit. Um, the color scheme would match the house. The roof would match the house. Any other questions from the board? Can, can we go back to the aerial view? And there are six or seven sheds in the neighborhood. So this is not a first shed to the neighborhood. And we do have um, acceptance from both of our neighbors on either side and on the front of our property. Okay, so you have talked to them? There, well, two we of them have, are right have, there. Some of them are here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm guessing since this is the last item, we're gonna hear from some people. Yeah, that's fine. No right. <laughs> oh. So I'll open the public hearing. Does anyone like to comment on this oh, item? Okay. Yes, we have a postponed item. I'm Joe Katz, uh, representing, I'm on the board of our Homeowners Association. And, and your um, address? I beg your pardon? Your address? A 2754 Warwick. Thank you. Um, um, I came to this rather late. <laughs> Um, our president is uh, is out of town. I visited with the, the homeowners this weekend, great folks. And in looking at this today, I noted that um, they want to encroach four feet into the 16-foot setback, meaning that means they would be 12 feet from the property line. And I gather what they're seeking uh, is to build within four feet of the property line. And I'm concerned that their request is inadequate to their needs. And that's my only comment. It's definitely four feet. So hold on a second. It's still the public uh, comment. So. Yeah. So am I correct? If I'm mistaken or I've misread this, tell me. It would be a 12-foot setback. They're asking to go four feet into the required 16. So right. the setback would be 12 feet from the lot line. Right. But I gather they, they intend to build within four feet of the lot line. No. 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 No, I'm mistaken. Feet. 12, 12 feet. feet. Oh, terrific. Okay. 12 feet. Intended to be four feet. So, again, uh, we're still in the public hearing. You can respond uh, once I get close public. So, they're, they're going to be 12 feet off the lot line. He's saying no. Instead of this, that's feet. not what he's saying. Yeah. He's disagreeing they're, to that. I, my understanding is they're building four feet from the property line. Hmm. We'll clarify that. We'll yeah. make sure. Yeah. Thank okay. you for bringing that up. That's so we're clarifying. Clear. Okay. I don't want them right. to not be served by whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. for your comment. Any, anyone else would like to speak on this item? Nobody else? All right, so I'll close public hearing and then have the homeowner respond to the comments. 
So it's definitely four feet from the property line. Okay, then there's a this, misunderstanding around the encroachment. All right, so then yep. this wasn't properly noticed. Correct. We then, can't consider this tonight. Fair enough. We can only grant one 12 feet from the property line the way it was noticed. Right. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, is this something that we can, can we request a tabling? Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. 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 oh yeah. okay. Yeah. Just, we no, can just put you back on We're going to have to re-notice it. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be postponed. The notice too. was incorrect. Oh, okay. Because we told neighbors that they'd only, that you'd only be encroaching yeah. four feet, but really you're saying you're going to be encroaching 12 feet. Okay. So the neighbors have to be noticed about okay. what the encroachment will actually be because then they may have oh, okay. an opinion about it. Okay, because our neighbors on both sides actually came over and viewed it. And By they law, we have to do it. Yeah, okay. That's a, a legal okay. requirement. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to table. We have a so, move so, to table this So we have a move to table. For support. additional notice. Support. 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 All those in favor of the motion to table, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So we can go back now to eight. Eight. table item uh, eight. eight. The retaining wall. I I felt like we had enough information on this. Did people agree? This so is I, my neighbor. Oh, I think we can. You're uh, going to recuse yourself, huh? I mean, it definitely needs to be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to go out into the public if you want. So to I, I I think we can have the staff present this unless somebody so. somebody we'll wants the homeowner here. Oh, I'd have, be happy to present it. Let me yes. get to the yeah. slide so I okay. can accurately present it to you. Okay. Um, what we have here is a failing retaining wall. What are we on, number eight? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting there. I think the pictures actually speak well for themselves. Yes, yep. I think so, too. Um, Very specifically helpful picture the bottom. Right there. So what we have is a request from the homeowner to replace an existing retaining wall um, which is clearly uh, required due to the grade change. Um, also, just want to show that it, the current wall is shown in that photograph to be in ill repair or disrepair. Um, and the request is to install, replace it with a boulder retaining wall, with the highest point being at that corner, which is that, um, which is where that exceeds the four feet in height. Same height, same location. Correct. Okay. So I'll open this item to the public. Anyone like to comment on this item? And I will close the public hearing and bring it back for a motion. In regards to the appeal at 4296 Stoneley Road um, for the dimensional variance to replace an existing retaining wall exceeding four feet, I move that the variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty. Um, because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance will be unduly burdensome um, because uh, without the uh, retaining wall, it would prevent reasonable use of the property. Uh, there's no adjustment <coughs> to the adjoining neighbor because this is just a replacement and replacing a uh, wall that's an ill repair. Uh, unique circumstances of the property, again, because it has sloping topography, uh, a retaining wall such as this at the height that goes along with the slope is required. And because of that, it is not self-created. Uh, applications for all necessary permits must be made within one year for the proposed uh, retaining wall, and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. And do you have to scream retain, uh, retaining walls? No. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, request any additional evergreen plantings or screenings. You should do screen boulders. Yeah. Is, is there a second understood? Maybe. Yeah, yes. so we have a motion and uh, support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Request is granted. Do I have a motion to uh, so move. Uh, motion end the meeting? <laughs> yep. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we are adjourned.